So um, I am Kim Raj. Um, I work at Open Embedded and uh, for daytime job I work at Juniper. Um, so I will be talking about uh, eglibc, making it configurable. So there are uh, some cool features that's there in eglibc that probably uh, many of us know. And uh, so today I'm going to um, talk about uh, the configurate configurability of uh, eglibc. Um, so. So what is eglibc? Um, it's a variant of GNU C library, uh, especially uh, aimed at uh, op uh, embedded systems. Um, it was uh, launched uh, about six years ago. Um, the main purpose of it was to get improvements into embedded systems. And uh, back then, glibc was more and more targeted towards desktop-based systems. And uh, there were um, improvements that could be done which were specific to embedded systems were not that interesting for um, desktop systems. Um, so the uh, main focus was, of course, the features that would make sense into the embedded systems. So uh, as you can see, binary compatible with GNU C library. So it would always be in sync with the upstream GNU C library. Uh, it mirrored every day. And, uh, and it follows the release schedule of glibc completely. So it's an add-on on top of existing glibc. Uh, no features are removed um, from upstream glibc. And uh, many of the features that are proposed on eglibc, which are essentially common for glibc, are uh, redirected to uh, appropriate glibc mailing lists all the time. So it's. Um, it's an add-on, as I said earlier. Uh, just makes it easy to get glibc into the embedded device, embedded systems. Um, so what are its uh, goals? Um, one of the goal was to reduce the size. And uh, um, so I'll talk about. Uh, so the whole configuration mechanisms that were put in place were mainly to do the uh, um, size management, where the you know the, the fully blown glibc is quite big, um, and uh, the other uh, fundamental um, issue was cross compilation. So most of the embedded systems are cross compiling um, build systems, and uh, um, there were uh, improvements or fixes that always were done on top of glibc. And uh, it was thought that eglibc will consume them, and um, it would make it more cross-compiler friendly, if you will. And um, so for that matter, if you go to eglibc uh, sites, then there are very nice documents on how to cross-compile it and how to um, actually run eglibc tests in cross-environments. So um, it's it's. Uh, it has very extensive and very nice documentation on that. And um, uh, it has been adopted in uh, major distributions, especially uh, Debian, uh, thereby it flows into Ubuntu. Uh, Open Embedded flows into Yocto um, and others. And um, um, Gentoo also has a port of eglibc if you want. Um, so website is uh, eglibc.org, and uh, um, it hosts the uh, uh, all the information about it, all the releases, and uh, uh, information about mailing list and uh, SCM and everything. So, so what is what does it have for uh, managing the configurations? Uh, right uh, when the the configuration management was introduced into it, it was inspired by kconfig, but wasn't kconfig. Um, so you can say it's like a homegrown mechanism for uh, handling the configurations. Um, so in eglibc's world, they are called option groups. Um, the option groups are, you know, uh, key config or configuration in general is uh, can be a blessing and it can be a mess. Um, so it has to be designed very carefully what parts of your projects you want to configure. And um, 
um, it was decided that based on the uh, POSIX specifications, the, the categorizations of various uh, option groups will be done. And uh, it has the same syntax, uh, very similar to uh, kernel's kconfig. And uh, as we all know, kconfig is also part of other projects like BusyBox and UCLibc. So um, it was, it is pretty similar to that one, but not exactly <coughs> same. Um, there has been some work, I'll mention that later, to bring real kconfig into eglibc. So um, that's how the configurations are maintained. And uh, there is a, a whole list of option groups which uh, are actually documented in the source code. I've given the name, optionsgroup.def. It documents uh, all the uh, possible option groups that are right now available. It's being modularized even more. Um, but you know, as people come with various option sets, they get added. And so it, it has grown over a period of time. Um, essentially, as of today, um, uh, what we have is, for example, networking. You can disable it if you want. It's, it's as an um, it's a option group available. Um, similarly, libam, the math library, um, is optional. You can remove it if you want. Um, other options are um, essentially uh, locales, if you don't want them. Um, and then glibc uses a lot of inlining. Um, so you know it's uh, important for code size sometimes. And uh, there is an option to disable really big macros. So that's how eglibc does inlining. It defines macros and then includes them in the source code. Um, so if, if we disable that option, then all the big macros are disabled, and they are converted into function calls. So um, um, these are kind of, um, uh, and then there is uh, the catalog uh, handling routines. They are also optional. Um, likewise, there has been many uh, divisions done um, at the feature level um, in the option groups. The default options are stored in option groups default. So when you're building, this is the one that's read first. And uh, the default is to enable all the groups, which means no change from status quo. So if you don't do anything, it builds the same set that you would build without kconfig um, being part of it. Um, so other thing that's uh, very um, uh, important is that the, it only enables the features or disables them, essentially it doesn't modify some functionality. So for example, it wouldn't go and say, OK, you know, there are redundant printouts. I'll just remove them. So it either enables, so like libm, for example, it will either enable, enable it or it will disable it fully. Um, the second thing is the consistency is that default is to switch everything on. So there is no like a carved out uh, combination that you would use by default. Um, so that simplifies the configuration management, and uh, and essentially it helps in debugging. So, for example, you have a bug, right? You tweak the configuration somewhere, and then you have the issue, and you can go back to the default and then start disabling one option after another, the ones that you have disabled, and thereby you can get to the to the bottom line of the issue. Um, so it has been uh, tried that we can keep it simple. Because if you look at, for example, uclibc, it has a huge set um, of kconfig, and there are architecture-specific options. So if you're uh, compiling for ARM, it means something else. If you compile for MIPS, it means totally something different. And uh, buffer sizes vary, and you know it's it's uh, it's quite a mess. And as a result, you end up with like you know this is a well-known working set of configuration set, and you live with that. Um, Ellipse has tried to uh, use the simpler versions to manage the configurations. Uh, moving forward, so I have a combination of options. Uh, this is using um, Yocto, 
essentially I did a few measurements and uh, um, so there is a, a version of it's called uh, Pocky Tiny uh, which basically uses reduced set of, in, uh, of uh, functionality from glibc and um, and so I could compare um, a fully blown um, eglibc the libc part of it for ARM for example is 1.2 megabytes in size and it reduces down to 830 kilobytes similarly the ld.so reduces uh, down because uh, um, ld.so has a lot of debugging options that are part of it and uh, there are options in the key config if you go through that and that you can disable those which essentially reduces the size but it also removes the functionality so you know you cannot do uh, a runtime ld debug and stuff like that so you know you, it's it's configurable at uh, at a, at a, at a cost uh, similarly libm uh, reduced uh, because uh, uh, libm has um, conversion routines from float to long double and double and sometimes if accuracy is not something that's important to you and uh, you can live with uh, you know less accuracy uh, many times in embedded systems you know you really don't care about the transcendental functions but if you do uh, and you can live with like say you know single precision then there are options in libm that you can disable those routines which do the um, single float conversion to long double and back and forth so essentially you get little um, less accurate results in your floating point calculations but the size reduces dime uh, reduces quite a bit so um, so likewise uh, there are main options for the library the C library itself and then the, if you disable the network then all the uh, live resolve and uh, uh, and friends they get disabled similarly there are options to disable crypto um, if you don't need it you can disable crypto for example so I just picked up three examples but if you if you see uh, eglibc has a suite of libraries that come with it uh, libc is one of them um, so essentially many times you'll see the total size of libc is around 4 meg or something um, and if you compare with this whole set then the reduction is quite a bit it can get to the half of the size of a fully blown um, uh, eglibc with all the um, um, locales and you know message catalogs and everything built in and many times you, uh, in embedded systems you really don't uh, want those things so you can easily pull them out so what's missing currently it doesn't do sanity checking for the config file so you have um, you mistype a option it will accept it and you miss a dependency it will not take it and uh, you know it will fail to build and it, you won't get a sensible message out of the build saying why it failed it will just complain about the missing functionality um, so this is a problem with the current implementation um, that I just mentioned earlier that it is pretty um, homegrown uh, resembles kconfig but isn't kconfig so it doesn't do any dependency checks that generally the kconfig from the kernel will do or it doesn't do um, uh, other kind of sanity checks that you could get from the kconfig tools um, so what has happened in the past year or so um, Steve Longerbeam one of the developers has posted patches for um, bringing the kernels kconfig tools um, to do the config management essentially into eglibc um, so the uh, patch has been on the mailing list it hasn't been applied yet um, but in open embedded essentially we have been uh, carrying it for a long time now we have been forward porting it and keeping it in shape um, there are certain uh, uh, improvements that are needed to it which has been commented by maintainers and um, those needs to be addressed and uh, uh, so that's where the kconfig patch is uh, right now it's not 
in the source is yet. So uh, how we managed to get it to work? So there is uh, a tool uh, called kconfig frontends. It's basically, um, if you look at any of the uh, projects which are using kconfig, they have their own copy of kconfig. If you look at BusyBox, it has its own copy of all the tools. Similarly for UC libc and any other. So they occasionally sync with the kernel, which is sort of, you know, pseudo upstream for all the kconfig work. And then they will get all the improvements into their projects and the maintainers have to do that part. Um, what we did here is there is a project called kconfig frontends. Um, it's uh, maintained by the same people who maintain cross tools. And uh, um, the package itself is fairly well maintained. It releases with every kernel, major release like 3.4, 3.5, 3.6. Um, so you can always have a consistent release of the kconfig frontends. So essentially, that's a dependency we have used so far. Whether bringing kconfig directly into eglibc remains to be seen. But if kconfig frontends is uh, available most of the times on all kind of distributions, then it's easy to use it um, because it's a prerequisite now to build um, eglibc for native or cross. Um, so it supports all the tools that uh, you need, mconf, nconf, gconf. Um, and uh, so eglibc have um, been modified. So there is an autoconf option um, which, with which you can specify where your kconfig tools are. And uh, if you have standard installation of kconfig frontends, it will figure it out from user bean and also in all locations. But if you have that installed in some different locations, then you can specify where the kconfig is installed. And then like kernel, you would do like make config to uh, essentially build your final configuration before you start um, building um, eglibc. So, uh, so there is actually some uh, pre-processing and cross-processing that's needed to be done to deal with the traditional options that you know the homegrown system has. Um, the options are already defined. So it's essentially, the tool essentially does is it converts to eglibc naming styles um, because all the um, uh, kernel options have to match with config something. So um, the this is a Perl script. Essentially, it runs before um, on the default config and any defined configuration you have, um, which defines your option groups, and then converts that into kconfig syntax that can be understood by, yes? If I'm not mistaken, there's an option to kconfig Ah, I see. OK. Um, yeah, we haven't used it, um, but I'll certainly look at it, and uh, that's probably a very good thing. We can avoid the uh, pre-processing, but you know, these uh, the patch is almost two years old, so um, yeah. Correct. So um, yeah, so those are kind of improvements, like you know, we would do um, moving forward. You know, when once we get it upstream. But uh, that's that's a very good point, and essentially reduces the complexity that we have right now to deal with this uh, uh, munging. So, and then uh, we also have a post-processing tool because once kconfig has done the, all the uh, sanity checking processing, we have to convert it back into something that eglibc's build system understands. So there is a pre-processing and there is a post-processing, but. Um, if we have that option that as um, you mentioned, then you know these tools can be removed. But um, status quo, as of now, we use those tools, and they get invoked implicitly when you are building um, the config, which is the first step. 
and uh, um, this is again a post-processing tool, uh, does conversion again um, into the option group settings that are understood um, by the eGLIPC or GLIPC build system. So um, what it will do is essentially it, um, the build system has a, another uh, fragment into it which reads the config files and then it has kernel make file style um, targets that are then optionally added to the build or not. So since default is on, all of them are added. If you have any of them set to no, uh, then they will be removed. So that's pretty simple. So what's the current state? Um, in the patches, they were discussed on eglibc mailing lists and there were feedbacks improvements done, but uh, after that, there are still some, um, some comments that need to be addressed. Um, hasn't been done yet. Still pending those reviews. Um, or in fact, those reviews need to be addressed. And um, as we know that you know, a lot of features from eglibc are moving into glibc proper um, of late. And uh, there is a big list of feature list. If you go to eglibc mailing this, then it lists exactly the amount of uh, the number of features that are in eglibc which are not in glibc are being proposed for glibc upstream which means there will be less and less to carry in eglibc um, in future and certainly um, i hope that uh, uh, kconfig is a very good feature um, that could make into upstream glibc once we have it in uh, in a in a acceptable state and working in upstream eglibc um, and uh, eventually, I think it will be a good improvement into GLIPC, and um, that's all I have. And 